Collaborations of Light is a group of 11 rising artists and activists that are performing all across the city this summer, including all four days at Lollapalooza. We have Collaborations' new director of youth programming, Pinky Ray, here to chat. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for having us. Pinky, let's go ahead and start with you. Tell us a little bit about Collaboration and a little bit about the light, you know, that is uh, gearing more towards the, uh, the youth. Absolutely. So Collaboration uh, is a theater for social change. Um, and a lot of the work that we do is around building sort of knowledge and empathy and dialogue around the inequity that we see every day here in our city and globally. Um, and so I've been working with Collaboration for quite a while in smaller roles. They might bring me on to do a performance or to host something. And then this year when they were um, talking about the light programming, they needed a new instructor. And my sort of experience within teaching artistry and education just married perfectly with the org. So we have a group of wonderful young people called The Light. And essentially they're shining their light all over the city of Chicago. They get to create works around different social justice platforms that are important to them. And it's important that we say important to them because we just can't say, you need to write a song about this, right? It's what are the things that are affecting them? What are the things that are close to home? What are the things that are really important to them? So some of the topics that we've been working on over the summer are um, racism, LGBTQIA plus communities, um, feminism, social cl social equality, climate change, just the gambit of you know things that are sort of going on in our communities that we see that we want to address. Um, and then they create new works around those social justice platforms and then perform them all around the city. So I've always said I have the coolest job in the world where I get to talk about things that are important and then help young people create art around that. Um, we created a group piece called I Am An Artivist. So they learned the term artivist for the first time, which is artist and activist, because as artists, we feel you should be using your platform to talk about the things that are happening in your community and the injustices around the world. So they're all sort of young artivists, like lighting up the world and creating change in our city and hopefully inspiring global change around the world. And they get paid to do this, which is really important to mention, is they get paid to create new work. I never had this as a young person. I did not have uh, mentorship. I did not have programming that centered the arts. And I definitely didn't have programming that paid me to do the thing that I love and use that to expand my mission around the world. So it's so cool that I get to do this job um, and that our young people get to contribute um, just their expertise. We need to listen to young people. They are the most important folks that we have on this planet and we got to listen to what they're saying um, and, you know, enact change with the things that they're um, expressing our needs in their communities and their and their neighborhoods. That, that is amazing. I mean, especially, you know, knowing their worth, knowing their value, and especially as a teenager, that's going to go into their college years, their first, you know, big job. And as they get to adulthood, to always know that that always matters. A lot of us don't get to learn that lesson until later in life. And it's wonderful that that gets instilled as they're teenagers. Absolutely. It's an election year. So there's a lot of things going on that, you know, that you're talking about, that the kids are talking about. But the decisions that are being made now are really going to shape who they are as adults when they get into their college years, when they get into their first jobs um, and having their voice being heard. Because a lot of the times, yeah, I remember being a teenager and you just wanted someone to listen to you because you had something important to say, even though you may not have that right to go ahead and vote just yet. Absolutely. And one of the cool things that we did uh, in programming is we actually had our older person because we're opening up a new space um, in Humble Park in Kimball Arts Center. We're opening up a theater that's going to be used for the community as well, right? It's not just coming in and saying, here's a theater and we're going to bring in everyone else. It's also honoring the community that we're at. And we had our older person come in and visit them. And the amazing thing was that our older person is actually a spoken word poet as well. So they were able to see in real time um, and shout out to older person, Jesse Puentes. We appreciate you so much. Got to come in and talk about um, sort of her childhood, right? And how she honors the younger her that, you know, was facing so many problems in her community and, um, you know, within her schooling, she was um, part of the um, youth incarceral system. They were, um, kicking her out of school when she, school is where she needed to be for just one infraction at the time. And so they got to meet this person who, you know, sometimes we don't know that our older person is, is just like us. It's sort of like this mysterious figure. And, you know, I don't know who they are or what they do. So to see her, to meet her, um, to hear her opinions on things that are going on currently, as you mentioned, with our election coming up and, you know, all the different policies that are being made without 
you know, the voices that they're impacting brought to the table. And so it was so beautiful for them to see her, to hear her, to know that she's part of the community. She's also a queer woman. So for them to be able to see that, hey, I can be that too. I can do that too. If this person was able to make it past all those difficulties and now have a say, right? Create policies that are really changing the world and changing the ways that, you know, folks are seen in the city of Chicago in these different neighborhoods. Um, and more importantly, for them to feel like she cares about them, right? And what is it that I can do for you? And, and what is it that you all need from me? Um, and so, yeah, as you mentioned, the fact that they get to create these art pieces, but also see how art is so intertwined with policy and, and politics. And you've got to be a good speaker if you're going to be a politician. And how do you learn those skills? Well, through the arts, through theater, through music, through dance. That's how you learn how to sort of captivate a crowd. So it's been a really beautiful experience to also show them that side, right? That there are politicians that care about them. There are politicians that look like them, sound like them, and have gone through a lot of the same things that they've gone through as well. Yeah, and like I said, I mean, we could have a whole five-hour conversation, not get through the entire topic, but, you know, most people may not see someone at their job or something that they envision for themselves, you know, whether it might be in, you know, in their neighborhood, in their lives, within their family, until later in life. And to be able to get this as a teenager, like, I just feel is just reshaping their whole mindset because sometimes you feel like you're the only one or that no one's listening to you. And to know that there's people in your community, you know, they may not be right in front of you, but they're there. And like, I just... I just, I just love that. And I just love that, you know, that so many kids in Chicago that are being able to be part of this organization. Absolutely. One of the things we did on that day was we had them all split up and find the older person in their neighborhood. They didn't even know who this person was. So find that person. And we also did something called Hood Heroes, where we talked about other organizations and nonprofits that are doing this work and or individuals who are artists that are using their platforms to also champion social change. So not only are we uh, focused on the arts and focused on creating new pieces, but we're also, you know, getting into the the policy, the politics, the, what, you know, how can you become a change agent in your neighborhood, in your city, ultimately all over the globe, right? How do we become representatives of what it truly means to be uh, a person here in the U.S. Um, and, you know, BIPOC people here in the U.S. and the experiences that we don't get to share because the media sometimes wants to tell our story for us. Um, there's a quote, if you don't tell your story, chances are someone else will, and they're probably going to get it wrong. So no. they get to firsthand take the opportunity to tell their own stories, right, to to com combat those stigmas about their communities, their city, <clears throat> And people that look like them and sound like them. Um, and some of the other things that we do is, you know, we talk about leadership. We're working on their artist resumes and bios. We're talking about professionalism and job interviews. We've had multiple guests come and visit them. Um, we just did a production workshop where a producer from the city created a new song for them. And we're going to write a song uh, that's called The Light using Commons, The Light. And we know he just performed at Millennium Park's 20th anniversary. Yeah. So his song, The Light, we took it, we remixed it. So we also talked about sampling in music and what that looks like. And, you know, again, how hip hop ultimately has changed the globe as well and given a voice to those folks who didn't have a platform for their voice. And, and speaking of voice, you guys are playing, performing all across Chicagoland starting next week. I mean, we got a couple of neighborhood performances as well as Lollapalooza. Let's go ahead and talk about the neighborhood ones first because those are coming up first. Uh, July 25th, which is the Thursday, you're going to be in Austin. The 26th, you're going to be in Rogers Park and then Saturday the 27th in Inglewood. Uh, talk a little bit about what the, those performances are gonna be like. Absolutely, we're so excited about these performances because we've been working really, really hard on them. Um, we actually just performed at Fresh Fest in Navy Pier as well, which is a new opportunity for us. Um, so a lot of what you're gonna see at these shows is truly youth voice, right? Youth-centered, youth-led, we're allowing them. We're not really doing too much of putting you know, any of our opinions or hands into what they want to create, um, yeah. sort of allowing them to create their own works, um, helping them right in the mentorship sense, like helping, you know, clean up the shows and what does the choreography look like? How do you project your voice? Um, but a lot of what you're going to hear are pieces around um, the social justice platforms that are important to them. Again, uh, we have three groups we split them up in. We had them sort of tally up what are all the social justice platforms that are important to us and then sort of boil it down to the top three. Um, and so we have three group pieces around um, the LGBTQI plus community, um, feminism, and also racism. Um, so there, a lot of them are speaking of 
their very real experiences with these things, which is heartbreaking to me, right? That our young people still in 2024 are dealing with things like racism and, and sexism and misogyny and things like that. So just knowing that they're so self-aware, that's the most beautiful thing about them is they're so yeah. self-aware and they're so smart where I'm like, I did not know any of these things at your age. Like y'all are ahead of the game and I'm so proud of these young people. Um, so you're gonna hear works around that. Some of them are doing cover songs. We have dancers that are doing original choreography. We have our I Am An Artivist poem that we're doing. Um, we have DJ Sean Rocca who will be playing music for us. Um, and again, it's, it's them sort of performing pieces that they've just created around these topics and platforms, whether in groups or individually. Um, and truly a family show, right? So bring out the family, bring out a blanket, bring out a picnic basket, and just enjoy the voices of our young people. We we tend to not listen to them. We tend to not take them seriously. And it's very important that we not only support them, but that um, we also just honor them, right? And their experiences, because I really dislike when people say, we're giving a voice to the voiceless. No, everyone has a voice, right? Who's giving them the platform? Who's giving them the opportunity? Who's giving them the mentorship, the tools of the trade to be able to do this? So truly it's been the greatest experience being a part of this. Um, and sort of seeing how it has fleshed out and seeing these pieces starting from just an idea in their minds no. to like something on the stage that is just powerful and, and impactful. Truly, you know, people say arts don't change the world. I say they absolutely do. Because when we give them the opportunity to use their voices and their stories to create new pieces of art, the world just becomes a much better place. And you're gonna have one of the biggest stages here in, in Chicagoland coming up. August 1st through the 4th at 11.30 a.m. to 12, 2 to 2.30 and 4.30 to 5 at the Kids of Palooza stage at Lollapalooza. I mean, this is incredible because not just one, I mean, throughout the whole day. So anytime that you go, whether it's the early part of the day or during the later part, you know, please go check them out. Absolutely. And we forget that kids are part of festivals too, right? Like yeah. kids should be a part of that. They should be able to experience that, right? These, these t you know, ticket prices sometimes are so um just high and we can't afford it or even thinking of parents who want to come to festivals but they have kids um i love the fact that kids of palooza even exists because we're able to honor a space for young kids right and show them that from the very beginning of their birth to you know as old as 80 90 years old right music and performance and theater all of those things are integral to our existence so the fact that we get to give a space and a platform um, for our young people to perform, but also a space for kids to just be kids, right? And enjoy the arts. Um, and also just so much love to Lollapalooza and C3 um, because they're also including us in something called Immersion Day. So the day before Lollapalooza even opens, we get to tour the grounds. We get to see how does merch work? What does the food vendor situation look like? Who are the artist managers? How do you even book these people? How early are you booking these people? So we get the ins and outs of this festival from the perspective of those folks that are doing the work. Because sometimes we don't see that. We see this big festival, Lollapalooza, and we don't think all of the hands that go into it, all of the people that have small roles to big roles, right? It's really important for our young people in the arts to understand that there are multiple roles for you, not just the limelight. We know we all love and want the limelight, but there's other jobs that can sustain us while we're working on our own artistic career. So the fact that Lollapalooza is bringing us on to come the day before, to tour the grounds, yeah. to talk to these people, um, and then the fact that they're just allowing us a stage to perform. Um, we get to perform for really little kids. So it's cool for our young people to see, hmm, how do I adjust my show for a very small kid? Or how do I make a show that's universal enough that a little kid will understand it and vibe with it? But again, an 80, 90 year old grandma is gonna come in and say, these kids are doing you know, what they should be doing. These kids are truly creating change in the world. Yeah, I have friends with, with young kids that um, you know, have been going for, for many, many years. And now those kids are now te you know, teenagers you know, who might you know, check out other performances, but it's always something that they treasure. You know, it's one of those things and maybe, you know, later on in life, if parenthood is one of those paths that they choose that, you know, they love the festival and maybe that's a tradition that they're always going to continue. And I love that Lollapalooza does that uh, for our young people to be able to perform and not just you know, maybe work their way up from a smaller venue to that. I mean, you have the biggest stage to know that like, oh, my goodness, like this could be a dream of mine if I want to continue on this path. 
Absolutely. And now you can put this on your resume, right? You can say that I performed at Lollapalooza, at Kids of Palooza. I know how to do all these other things. It's just, you know, to be able to see themselves in those spaces and places where they truly deserve to be. There's, there's no uh, question in my mind that these are spaces that they truly deserve to be in and can flourish in. So the fact that they get to, it's one of the biggest music festivals in the world. The fact that they get to say they performed at it, the fact that they get to hone their creativity and their performance skills around it, um, it it's, it's just beautiful. And again, they are absolutely deserving. Let people know how they can support the, the group and, and, and collaboration, you know, throughout the year and how kids can, you know, sign up to be a part of this, you know, maybe next year. Yeah, absolutely. So they can find us at Collaboraction on Instagram or Collaboraction.org. That's C-O-L-L-A-B-O-R-A. C T I O N, not collaboration, collaboration, because it's collaboration also has to work with action as well. Um, they can find us online. Um, and then we will be um, hiring a new cohort probably next summer. We're hoping to get funding to be able to run this year round, right? So if there are any donors out there that want to give us some dollars so that we can work this year round, so that we can hire more teaching artists, so that we can have more young people doing this, um, truly it, it's a model that works, right? Our young people are already much more confident. Our young people are already um, showing their leadership skills, learning how to collaborate, working on resumes. So it's absolutely a model that works. The arts um, and education, they go hand in hand, right? So if anyone is interested in uh, in donating some dollars, that would be amazing because I truly want to see this model expand. I want this to be something um, where maybe we have a collaboration site at every school across the city of Chicago. And now we have more light members spreading their light, spreading their cheer, um, and just showing us again that young people have the answers. We just have to listen to them. Yes, listen, F final thing here, just you know, out of curiosity, when you get the students at the beginning, how are they versus, you know, towards the end versus like, what's important to you? I mean, do you have to like dig it out of them? Do they already come to it? Are they you know, kind of a little shy? Are they like, all right, I got this stuff out of the way, this is my stage, or like, I'm sure you probably get a variety, but what is that like feeling for you from the beginning towards like where we are now kind of building up to these big performance? Absolutely, it it's definitely runs the gamut of different sort of personality types um, because we do host auditions. So they do yeah. have to audition to be a part of this. So we already get to see them from the beginning. Most of them are already um, performers in some sense, right? So maybe yeah. they've already created some works or um, you know, they're, they're singers or they're choreographers, but they are not at the level yet where they can see themselves doing this professionally. So yeah. we have the, the overly confident, and then they come in and they're like, oh, actually, I don't know all the things that I thought I knew, you know, let me practice some humility. And then we have the really shy young people who absolutely come out of their shells. The most beautiful thing is the collaboration and camaraderie that they have with each other. They're messaging each other all the time. They're supporting each other. They're giving each other um, words of advice. If someone's at the mall shopping for an outfit for the show, they're like, hey, we should wear this. Hey, look at this outfit. Like, they truly are young people who some of them know, have known each other from school, but some of them sort of live opposing lives in this in the schools that they go to. And now that they get to connect with each other, truly, we've seen them come out of their shell. We've seen them become leaders. So we send them to greet any guests. So at the end of anything, they're shaking hands. Thank you for coming. My name is they're working on elevator pitches. Um, we're actually having them promote the show themselves. So we give them postcards and we practice. How do you go up to people, random people, and give them a postcard, right? So it's it's helping them with any shyness, with their leadership. Um, but really, at the end of the day, we we just, what we're doing is we're just highlighting what's already within them. They all have that spark in them. They all have that light within them. It's just our job to help shine a light on their light. Oh my God, Piggy, I could talk to you for a hundred hours. I yeah, we like can. Listen, I got hours. all day, Rudy. I got all day. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me go check them out. If you're at Lollapalooza, they're going to be there 1130, 2 o'clock and 430, all four days. So one of those days, if you're going all four days, definitely go check them out. The different groups, go support our youth. You know, mm -hmm. they're going to make a difference. They're going to be the next generation. We definitely want to give them that platform to know that we care about them because they're putting in so much effort to do these shows. And also if you're in one of the neighborhoods, you know, in Austin, July 25th, Rogers Park, July 26th, and Englewood, July 27th, go support them, go let them know that they matter. Go And, and you know what, go have a good night out. Like that is the other thing too. Let a them know, date also, night, a family night, yeah. you know, like maybe you'll yeah. find a date there, who knows? And who knows, you know, and I'm preaching to the choir, but winter's gonna be here before we know it. So go enjoy those summer nights as much as possible. Yes. All right, thank you, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you.